Good day, and welcome again here to Emanuel Lutheran Church in Seaboing, Michigan. I am Pastor Boyer coming to you today with a brief devotional thought. I want to think back just a couple days to our last Sunday service. We confirmed 13 of our young people. They'd grown up in the faith. They'd been taught the faith by parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, sponsors, teachers, and of course, pastors as well. They stood here in our church and they confessed that they'd been baptized, forgiven of all of their sins. They acknowledged, of course, that confirmation is not a sacrament, it doesn't give any special grace. But confirmation joins very nicely with baptism. It doesn't by any means complete baptism. Baptism is complete in and of itself. And the fullness of forgiveness is imparted there in baptism. But confirmation is us speaking the faith that we have been given. Those 13 young people confess that they renounced the devil, all his works, all his ways. They confessed the creed as they've learned it. They confess that they believe Scripture is indeed God's Word. That doesn't just contain God's Word, but every word of Scripture is God's Word. They confess that the doctrine of our church, our LCMS church body, is true and correct, as they've learned it from Scripture and the small catechism. They promise to faithfully receive the Lord's Supper and to faithfully hear the Word of God. Faithfully is a loaded word. It means as often as possible. They promised also to lead holy lives, lives as Christ would have them lead, loving their neighbor, encouraging their neighbor, doing all they can for those around them, and building up their neighbors in the faith. Those are some lofty promises made by our confirmants. Perhaps you were confirmed, either in this congregation or another, and you made promises very similar to the ones our confirmants made. Those promises are of the law. It's not unusual for a people, God's people, to make promises unto him. The Israelites did it repeatedly in the Old Testament. They promised to follow God's word and do what God said. We find in the Old Testament that the Israelites often failed to follow God's word and do what he said. We're no different. As we confirm our young people each year, confirmation time is a great time to reflect on our own lives. If we have been faithfully hearing God's word, if we've been faithfully receiving the supper of our Lord, if we've been faithfully receiving Jesus Sunday after Sunday, if we have been living lives according to his word, if we are honest with ourselves, if we understand the law of God, our answer must come back, no. We have not been living lives of faithful service. Rather, we've often been serving ourselves. We have not been as faithful as we could have been in worship and reading scripture and receiving the gifts of God. Confirmation is a great time for us as God's people to repent. We know that Jesus is taking care of all of our sins. As he gave himself upon the cross, as he died in our place, he gives us the benefits of his death through baptism, forgiving all of our sins. They're all drowned and die through baptism into Christ. We have been justified. There is nothing, not one single thing, that we need to do or say to receive that great gift. But when it comes to sanctification, that's the, well, what now? After we have been saved, what do we do? We do 
faithfully receive his word. We do faithfully receive his supper. We do faithfully gather together for worship and we support and encourage our neighbor. Sometimes it seems like we do very well in sanctification. It seems like we are really going strong in the faith. Other times it might seem like our sanctification is, well, rather weak. Maybe we haven't been in worship. Maybe there's been other excuses that crop up. It's a great time to repent. To repent of our sins and draw upon that baptismal grace that Jesus gives us. As he forgives all of our sins, how blessed we are as we renew again our efforts in sanctification, as we renew again our commitment to be in his word, in prayer, and receiving his gifts in the supper, as we cover ourselves again with the baptismal grace given us. This is indeed a wonderful time to be in worship, to encourage our brothers and sisters in Christ, to renew our own confirmation vows, and of course, to encourage our young people who just made theirs. We are blessed as God gives us chances to confess who we are and whose we are. And so this confirmation season, I encourage you to do exactly that, to join us for worship, to receive Jesus through the divine service, to be forgiven again of your sins, to renew your zeal in sanctification and love for your neighbor. What a joy, what a privilege we have to serve our God in his kingdom right here on earth. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for our young people who professed their faith last Sunday. We thank you, O oh Lord, for giving us tongues to profess the faith that you have given us. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for giving us your Son, Jesus, who has given himself upon the tree. We thank you for joining us to Jesus through baptism and justifying us, forgiving us of all of our sins. Strengthen our commitment toward you. Strengthen our love toward our neighbor. Grant us, O oh Lord, always to strive in sanctification to love one another. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the great blessings we share as your people. For we ask all of this in Jesus our Savior. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. I love you, the Lord loves you, and I'll talk to you again soon.